hand shan sword unsheath chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, chapter 5, boundless dawn, elder men, my condolences, please be sure to take care of your health, we mourn the passing of Ji Shao's Henren, these troubling times truly are sorrowful for the entire world, may he rest in peace, when Meng Zuli paid tribute, representatives of other sects came forward one after the other to offer condolences to the only living relative of Ji Shao's Henren, when Meng Zuli faced a group of elders, ten times older than him and with cultivation stronger than his own, he did not show the slightest hint of fear, he exchanged a couple sentences with the ones he already knew and regarding the ones he did not, he could guess their status by their clothes and tone of voice, in short, his etiquette was thorough and his words were flawless, the people of Han Shan secretly breathed a sigh of relief, this was the first time that they had seen Ji Shao's cultivation partner in a positive light. The sect leader felt a sense of deep gratitude and said to him, You have worked hard. Meng Zuli was taken aback and thought to himself, What is so hard about this? I'm only afraid that the real play hasn't even started. Have I wasted the past three years reading the script for nothing as gaze passed over Ji Shao's memorial tablet hanging at the very top, but his line of sight was blocked by someone. The newcomer wore pinkish yellow monk robes and had a face of a middle-aged person with a gentle expression, Elder Meng has come at the right time. This humble monk happens to have a matter to request your assistance with. Meng Zuli saluted slightly, I do not deserve your praise. Master, please speak. The monk warmly said, after the sword saint's departure, what will happen to his boundless dawn sword as soon as he finished speaking, the entire hall went completely silent. No matter which lord or guest, everyone's mind was clear. Today at the ancestral hall in Hanshan, bringing up boundless dawn was inevitable. However, it was asked in an unexpectedly plain manner just like a Bai Nanling Buddhist monk who had no relationship with worldly affairs. Meng Zuli's expression did not change. Since it is my cultivation partner's vestige, naturally it is an arch Chantun peak. A hundred years ago, the demon race invaded the human realm. The six great sects devoted their efforts to forge an unparalleled spiritual weapon for Jia Zhao, asking him to take the sword in hand and defend the peace of the human realm. Celestial meteorine from Mingai Lake was used as material. Flynn from the Jia Center of Ming Shan, 27, served as the spark of ignition. Spiritual wood from Songfeng Valley was used to stoke the flames. Spiritual spring waters from Nanning Temple tempered the sword and magical talisman from Wuyan Monastery had been engraved on the sword. Every sect had gathered their strongest wear hands and meets the boundaries of heaven and watched as Jia Zhao's Henren personally started the furnace. The sword had been completely forged just when the chaos of war was springing up everywhere. The situation so unstable that no one had thought it before. If Jia Zhao dies, where should the sword go? In whose hands should it belong to? The cultivation world had a saying, with Ji Zhao overlooking Han Shan, he is only a meter away from the heavens. This meant that Ji Zhao's cultivation was at its peak. Standing at the summit of Han Shan, the distance to the heavens was only a meter away. Thus, his precious sword was named Boundless Dawn, a sword that just happened to be a meter long. In the people's inherent knowledge, Ji Zhao will always have it, just like the sun will always hang in the sky, and the Yangtze River will always flow east into the sea. The atmosphere of the ancestral hall suddenly changed. Meng Zuli sensed a sharp gaze on his person and turned his head to look. A skinny and tall middle-aged man was staring at him. Perhaps Elder Meng did not know. This sword was casted together by the six sects. It cannot be considered your cultivation partner's vestige. This person wore a dark blue green gown, bearing an old sword on his back. His expression was indifferent. Meng Zuli saluted and said, So it is Elder Ji Jian from Mingai Lake. Hearing this, everyone at Hanshan was extremely angry. The sect leader lightly said, At the time we casted this sword for the human realm. In his entire life, Jia Zhao also held this sword for the human realm and did not rest until he died. What objection do you have this elder from Mingai Lake did not think that it was unfilial and loftily said, He has already departed. I can accept Ji Zhao, but not Hanshan. A group of Mingai Lake disciples wearing blue-green gowns stood behind him, faintly opposing the white-robed disciples of Hanshan. Yet, on hearing this, the sect leader of Hanshan said in a cold voice, This spiritual weapon has lost its master Hanshan and also does not value concealing greedy desires for treasure. Since no one can match this sword, it is best to destroy it in a flash. The expression of everyone present in the ancestral hall darkened. The master of Nanning Temple smiled and said, Boundless Dawn has spent many years with Ji Zhao's Henren. It has recognized its master's spiritual nature long ago. It definitely will not agree to be controlled by someone else and as a different sex sword. It is also useless. As this humble monk sees it, my temple can take this sword and melt it down into reconstruction, refine it into six different weapons and give one each to the six sects. This way, everyone will be happy. All of the monks around him neatly praised Buddha, continuously praising excellent, excellent. Many young disciples did not understand. Someone asked his companion in passing, what on earth does Nanning Temple really mean? They were the first to raise a difficult question and now are once again the first to speak in the name of Hanshan whose hand the sword is and has nothing to do with Buddhist cultivation. But they don't agree to the six sects raising arms for the spiritual weapon, disturbing the human realm in a reign of terror. So they personally tried to smooth things over, so that the southern lake and northern mountain can each take a step back. Unfortunately it's hard to tell what's on the minds of others and the Buddha is chased in heart and human desires. I'm afraid that others may not be happy with this. Great master's words are wrong, said a William Monastery elder. The spiritual weapon has already been made, exactly as the heavenly law favored. When we forged this sword we exhausted everything we had. How can we easily let it be damaged? To recast it would be a reckless waste. Even if boundless dawn is never unsheathed, it is still a spiritual weapon and with its compressed power, we can use it to increase the power of any array by ten times. The people of Wuyan Monastery did not use blades. They only meticulously studied the use of arrays and talismans. Everyone knew that what he said was not in vain. An elder of Bi Shan said, if the sword saint had a disciple to follow in his steps, this sword would of course be passed down to him. Even if he does not have a disciple, as long as he said one sentence, this sword should go to whoever he says. My sect will be willing to concede. By no means would there be any objection. But did the sword saint mention before about who it should belong to? Although Hanshan had the advantage of home court, they also did not want to have a fallout against so many sects at the same time. The other sects thought that they were in the right and did not want to bear the infamy of disturbing Ji Shao's brave soul's reputation. The entire ancestral hall was like a tightly drawn bow with an arrow at the drawstring, while two sides were in a deadlock. Suddenly they heard someone say, Wait a moment. His voice was clear and bright. Everyone stared at him, as it was unexpectedly that young and weak cultivation partner of Ji Shao. No one had expected him to face his kind of battle and still be brave enough to speak. The little young master wearing embroidered robes was stared at by everyone. His face was pale, as if he was slightly afraid. My cultivation partner, he, he actually said before. After he ascends, this sword is to be given to an outstanding youth of the human realm, because they are the hope and future of the human realm. This precious sword is to be given to a hero, one who has the ability to live with it, regardless of the school or sect. Some people thought, has Hanshan already done preparations? Yet they saw the sect leader's surprised expression. Are these words true? Of course, I take my cultivation partner's dignity as a pledge. Meng Zuli thought to himself, I am sorry, Ji Zhaomdi. For now, please lend me your name. He hadn't finished speaking when someone responded with a loud voice. Since Henren said it himself, regardless of the sex opinion, we must follow in accordance with this order left behind Meng Zuli. My cultivation partner once said that when he had set the rules of the Hanhei secret domain, it was to select a successor. Everyone's expression was complicated. The sect leader lamented, Jia Zhao's heart embraced all under the heavens. This is indeed something he would say. The
The Grand Hanhei competition continued to this day. Han Shan Sekli said in a loud and clear voice, Everyone, the next competition will be during early spring of next year. When the time comes, Han Shan will have boundless dawn be the prize, to grant to the brightest and the best the tense atmosphere was broken and all the sex were causing an uproar. This, once it be to heedless Han Shan is seriously willing to part with it. In the past, in order to encourage young disciples to take part in the competition, sex would also come up with some spiritual weapons and magic elixirs to serve as prizes. However, today's matter was quite serious. The winner would be inheriting the spiritual weapon of Ji Zhao, the unrevealed boundless dawn sword. Husband, Meng Zili suddenly stepped out of the crowd and bowed before Ji Zhao's memorial tablet. Your last wish has been fulfilled. Rest in peace. They saw his sorrowful expression, teary eyes, then body crumbling and were silent for a moment. Meng Zili thought, fortunately, Hei Xianming isn't here, otherwise he definitely spit on my face. Ji Zhao, before you left, you said that you would have a gift for me when you return. Who would have known that it would be our final farewell? Now that you and I are separated by life and death, I don't want gifts. Just leaving me a memento would be fine. His speech was childish, yet because he was young, his childish way of expressing his feelings actually caused people to be moved. Han Shan's elders sighed in their hearts and the sect leader also felt sad. Today, many good friends of Han Shan had gathered and had prepared jubilant and literary eulogies. But if one was to say that someone mourned Ji Zhao wholeheartedly, without any other motive, it is very likely to be very few. Ji Zhao's unworthy cultivation partner would count as the most sincere and also the most pitiful. However, Meng Zuli said, I would like to take part in the Grand Hanhei competition next year. If I can win back your sword, I will not be your cultivation partner in vain. The uproar started once again and the sect leader quickly walked two steps to hold up Meng Zuli, shouting deeply, Nonsense. The grand competition is not as simple as you think it is. This is a matter of life or death. At once, Han Shan elders were attempting to settle the situation. Elder Meng was momentarily joking. Of course he was not being serious. Meng Zuli laughed miserably. My cultivation partner has already died. So what if I join him? Visitors wiped their tongues, so much so that they forgot their own voice. His cultivation is poor, yet his temperament is unexpectedly upright and yielding. The sword saint has not raised him in vain. Why should he throw away his life for nothing? I heard that he hasn't left Chengqing Peak for three years. No wonder he is naive and stupid. Meng Zuli remained unmoved, his posture straight, resolutely staring at Ji Zhao's memorial tablet. If thou art in heaven, please bear witness. Chapter 6, Unsided Pond. Mountain winds swept snow into the ancestral hall as the curtains in the hall fluttered about. Candle flames before the altar table swayed gently, reflecting in the thoroughly red, tearful eyes of the young man Han Shan Sekli to summon the head attendant. Come, quickly take Elder Meng to the side chamber to rest. He feared that if Meng Zili suffered any more agitation, he would commit suicide on the spot in the name of love and splattered blood everywhere. The young man's thin lips pursed slightly as he went outside with a few Han Shan attendants. Seeing this, people from the different sects quickly stepped aside, giving them space to leave. No matter what one thought, or what their opinion of Meng Zili was, in this circumstance, no one wanted to bear the infamy of being the one who hounded Ji Zhao's Henran's widow to death in front of his memorial tablet. The main hall of Han Shan was used for receiving visitors and holding gatherings. It was grand, broad, and vast. The side chambers covered less than one tenth of the area, but were more casual and comfortable in layout. It was a small hall where sect leaders and peak lords usually held discussions. Meng Zuli sat on a soft chair in the side chamber while the head attendant steeped soothing tea for him. The tea was amber colored and white, then steam wafted from the cup. Meng Zuli cut the tea in his hands and thanked the head attendant with a smile. The head attendant only sighed. After Meng Zuli finished drinking, someone also served him several plates containing melon seeds and snacks. Meng Zuli had already eaten before coming to the ancestral hall and so he halted them. I can't eat anymore. It is best not to waste this. The head attendant persuaded him. Your health is important. Why don't you eat a little when the sky began to darken and the lanterns in the hall were lit? The sound of footsteps could be heard coming from outside. Every peak lord of Han Shan was chatting with one another as they entered the hall. After sending off the other guests, they felt relieved. Unlike in the ancestral hall where they appeared taciturn, Han Shan originally had five peaks. Tian, 28, Yuke, 29, Chongbi, 30, Lulan, 31, and Ziyan, 32. After Jia married Meng Zuli, they became the sixth peak, Chang Chuen. Meng Zuli was about to stand and greet them, but the sect leader waved his hand, gesturing for him to stay sitting. After the sect leader, Jian Wei's Henran, sat at the top of the hall, the other peak lords took their seats at random. Some smiled at him, while others nodded lightly, but it was still nicer than their polite strange attitudes at his wedding ceremony three years ago. Must you go to the Hanhei secret domain? Have you really thought this through? Asked the sect leader. Meng Zuli nodded. Before he opened his mouth, he heard someone else hastily say, he just said in front of all the sects that he is going. It is too late to take it back now UK peak lord looks like a middle-aged person. His figure was tall and thin and he had a rather irritable temper. He had been suppressing a belly full of anger since long ago as a result of having to deal with the sects today. Chongli peak lord replied, it is not too late. We can say that he went into seclusion or got sick, or got lost. There are plenty of ways to go about it. He was a plump man with an amiable smile, wearing tall headwear. He did not seem like a sort of cultivator, but rather a studious Confucian scholar. Lulan Peak Lord intercepted. You think that what you have said can be good to plan? It is simply unreasonable. 33. With absolutely no respect for his own wishes, his eyebrows and beard were both long. He had been in charge of the law hall. 34. For many years, and was habitually harsh in words and stern in looks. Chong Li Peak Lord sneered. Do we have to watch him die to respect his wishes? When he reunites with Ji Zhao in the underworld early next spring, Ji Zhao will ask, Why are you here? And then he will say that the sect was incompetent. They couldn't even protect him. Have you thought about Ji Zhao's feelings? These few Peak Lords argued endlessly. Meng Zuli watched them arguing lively while he reached out for some melon seeds to eat. Lulan Peak Lord's gaze turned and he saw the young man's gaze eyes, as if he did not know that there would be a disaster early next spring. And so, he said resentfully, 35, how did Ji Zhao raise you like this? If you don't think a little more, in the future, on second thought, this child probably could not understand the big picture of survival, and so he struck the table and shouted, There will be no more melon seeds. Sweet Meng Zuli's hand shook and the melon seeds made a patter sound as they fell to the ground. Ziyan Peak Lord glanced at Lulan Peak Lord and whispered, What are you shouting for? Look, you have frightened the child. She was a beautiful married woman, leisurely fluttering a purple round fan. I have an idea. We will arrange several reliable disciples of our own to form a team with him and select places with few people to go. As long as we avoid the seven days of battle, we can simply forfeit and use the delivery array to leave the secret domain. She turned to Meng Zuli and said, You can see it is going for a spring outing, so you can relax. It can only be so the sect leaders Henran then asked, When Ji Xiao was here, did he teach you some life-saving techniques? Meng Zuli answered, Honestly, I haven't been taught anything. But he did leave behind many elixirs and magical instruments. How can we rely on these things? Lulan Peak Lord sighed deeply. Ji Zhao has been wise all his life. How could things be this muddled in your hands? Yang Peak Lord said, We still have four months until the grand competition. During this time, you should go to the argumentation hall. 36. The library pavilion and the sword practice grounds. Read and learn more and ask if you don't understand something. Learn how to use those instruments more proficiently. Though Han Shan was established by sword cultivation, she did not mention learning the sword, as time was running out and there would not be enough time left
Shimmy, watch your tongue. UKP Claude interrupted her. Cultivators of the human realm believed that the heavens had a spirit and it was to do to mention one's own misfortune. Few people would open their mouth and say, So what if I die with him the way that Mengzi did? Chen Qing Peak. Under peach blossom trees, the dim light of night shone. Ke Ming had come to visit as a guest and so the little day of Tong served quality tea with various preserved and candied fruits, along with sweet and salty snacks. Meng Zuli returned, accompanied by the cold and gloomy moonlight. Seeing Ke Ming eat and drink well made him feel at ease. And yet he couldn't help but push. Xian Er, this mountain top of mine isn't like how it was before. In the future, we'll need to be hardworking and frugal, breaking a spiritual stone in two to spend it. Eat less. When Yi Ke Ming paid him no mind and held the fruit platter in his embrace, what happened today? Go on, tell me. Thus, Meng Zuli started from when he first entered the ancestral hall, saying how he cried out husband and Xiao's memorial tablet with hazy tears in his eyes. After not even a few sentences, Ke Ming wretched, disgusted to the point that he choked on his food. Meng Zuli took the fruit platter and smacked his lips while eating. You were the one who wanted to know. Ke Ming, you can't even use a sword. What do you want boundless dawn for Meng Zuli replied with his own question. It's my cultivation partner's stuff. Why would I give it to someone else? All you say is my cultivation partner this. My cultivation partner that. It couldn't be that you really were in love with Qi Xiao. Could it Meng Zuli looked as if someone had stepped on his tail, jumping up at once. Nonsense, Ke Ming didn't feel like arguing with him. Fine, it's nonsense. Is that boundless dawn sword really here? Bring it out for me to see. I want to expand my horizons. The Yang race did not like to use magical instruments. They relied more on bloodborne skill. They showed themselves in battle and attacked with sharp claws or long beaks. But in the face of world-famous spiritual weaponry, they would still be curious. Meng Zuli pondered for a moment before he said, Come with me. Ke Ming hurried to catch up with him. The two passed through flowers and brushed past willows, arriving before the pond where Meng Zuli fed fish during the day. The water in the pond was sparkling, with several petals floating on the surface. Three koi fish swam back and forth and the bright moon was reflected in the pond. Meng Zuli pointed to the pond and said, This here is the pivot of the Changchun Peak Protection Array. Boundless Dawn has been buried underneath to keep the array stable. Ke Ming said in surprise, Jia Zhao didn't use it. Meng Zuli said lightly, Jia Zhao's sword cultivation had already reached completion. His sword was born from his heart. He hasn't touched the physical sword for many years. Ke Ming, then there's no need to bury it. It's such a waste. Who knows what he was thinking? Meng Zuli looked at the bright moon reflected in the water, and his voice was calm. Maybe he was afraid that a century later, the array would no longer be able to trap me and I would escape and cause disaster in the human realm. That is why he wanted to use this sword's power to completely control me. But who knew that after three short years, the person who created this very formation would die? The eternal Changchun formation took a great deal of effort and pain. But now it's just the Chang Chuen, 37, that's left. The author has something to say. Here's a late update. Cries, I thought that I'd be able to write to Ji Xiao in this chapter, but I overestimated my own speed. He'll definitely be here tomorrow. Ji Xiao, chuckles darkly Luo Meng Chuen, just forget about it, bro. Chapter 7, Sickly Youth. The snow outside of Han Shan ceased. A vast distance south, the temperature gradually warmed. The mountain range in the clouds was like a natural barrier, dividing the land into north and south. At nightfall, tired birds returned to their nests and spiraling smoke rose from a small village under the foot of the mountain. Food stall business in the small village was good, as they often had hunters on their way to the mountain. Trade caravans going back and forth from south to north rested their feet in the small village while passing by, eating some hot soup with rice and drinking a few bowls of wine to boost courage. This time, however, it was extremely quiet. Only one table of guests sat in the corner. There were four people in total, three of them white-robed youths leading another youth clad in plain cotton. The young man's face was pale and he coughed lowly now and then. The youth's clothes were clean. They carried swords, and impressively, they were cultivators. The north-south common border was in a regulated territory. Common people would step outside, unwilling to provoke cultivators, and so they kept their distance. Three cultivators sat upright, not drinking tea or alcohol. They were only waiting for the ordinary young man to eat vegetables and drink soup, and so appeared to be completely patient. Suddenly one of them frowned. It was as if he had sensed something, his expression furious, Zhang Shixing, those people are still following us all right. The round-faced cultivator sitting across from him laughed sarcastically. It's best that they come back to Hansh and with us for these few days. The three people had been leading a youth hastily on a journey, swapping water paths for mountain routes, swapping instruments for flying for going on foot. Yet no matter what they had chosen, their pursuers were always a few breaths not far behind them. The youth named Zhang Shixing and had a gentle temperament. Stop them. Tonight we'll cross this mountain, which is the northern territory. They won't follow us anymore. The cultivator with the round face was about to speak when he saw that the young man drinking soup raised his head. Who are they? The three cultivators looked at one another. Ever since this young man began to travel with them, he was always taciturn. If they told him some fantastic cultivation stories about remarkable things, they wouldn't see him looking curious and excited. This was the first time that he had even asked a question. Zhang Shixing replied, The people of the Mingyu Lake. Since you have already promised to enter our Han Shan Sword sect, that makes you Ashidi. To be honest, they're here because of you. Zhang Shixing decided to add a few more words. You have great innate spiritual potential, that of which is like Sword Saint Ji Zhao's. It's the kind that comes only once every hundred years. Mingyu Lake is also a sword sect. Naturally, they also want you to enter their sect. Because of the Grand Hanhe competition, each sect of the human realm valued the cultivation of young disciples tremendously. It could even be said that this kind of a competition started from accepting disciples. According to Han Shan's prestige, when they opened the mountain to accept students each spring, there would be tens of thousands who came to test their potential. It could even be said that of the ten thousand walking the boundless path of immortality, only one would be chosen. Besides this, the North depended on Han Shan's prominent cultivators and would send the outstanding youth of their clans up the mountain. When each peak elder and their disciples traveled down the mountain, they would also bring back children or teenagers they met who had excellent qualifications to Han Shan. The six great sects each occupied a region and all of them handled matters like this. Mingyu Lake and Han Shan were the south and north, distantly standing off at one another. The two sects had similar criteria for selecting talents. It was not the first time that there was a conflict over disciples along the border between the north and the south. The cultivator with the round face said to the cotton-clothed young man, when our cultivation world accepts apprentices, we strive for mutual consent. Provided you're unwilling, we would be left without any tricks. But Mingyu Lake has a whole bag of tricks and clever talk. Don't be tricked over to them, the young man nodded, yet secretly considered. The Southern Lake, 39, and Northern Mountain both take their own sex sort techniques, 40, to be venerated and believe the other is not legitimate. They have not conformed to each other for a long time, but hearing these three speaking in righteous indignation, it was not a dispute over orthodoxy, but rather a dispute caused by personal feelings. Two sex young disciples, when did they privately incur hatred? He could not understand, and so asked a couple more questions. Two out of those three cultivators angrily hit the table, while the most steady cultivator amongst them, Seneng Jiang, explained, Don't blame them for being upset. Two years ago, we traveled down the mountain. When we passed through Jiyang village, we happened to discover a boy with impressive innate talent. Although he wasn't quite on the same level as you, he was also a genius in sword cultivation who could be discovered but not sought. When that boy found out that he had potential in cultivation, he requested at once to return to Hanshan and with us. It seemed like everything had fallen into place. The cultivator with a round face h
forward with words and so he could only repeat so shameless exactly. Shameless. I wish I could have exposed him, a different cultivator said hatefully, but he disguised himself too well. I, I also couldn't tell, the cultivator with a round face said with righteous indignation, in short, once your cultivation is successful and you travel down the mountain, you absolutely must remember on this earth, besides Yao and demons, the cultivators of Mingai Lake are the most evil, they don't have a bottom line, they'll do anything, cough cough, hearing this, the young man's breathing was adverse, repeatedly coughing softly, he thought, I'm afraid that this is wrongfully accusing the people of Mingai Lake, considering Yan Zizi's rigid nature, he absolutely could not order the absurd matter of male disciples dressing up as women, it's definitely the disciples' own idea, just then, the faces of the three cultivators turned cold as they quickly stood up, he only saw six or seven people enter the restaurant, wearing green gowns, they carried swords on their back. You followed us all this way. What exactly do you want? As the leader took long strides forward as if he was the moon surrounded by the stars, a clear voice laughed. Did Han Shan bully this road? How come you can take it but I cannot Jing Di? You're too cruel the cultivator with a round face prepared to attack with his sword. However the person saluted generously. So it's Li Wei, He Ming and Jiang Suan. I haven't seen you for a long time. I trust you've been well. Li Wei put down the hilt, unwilling to stretch out his hand to hit a smiling man. Jiang Suan meticulously reciprocated. Cultivator, 43, Jing. Long time no see. A disciple of Ming Dai Lake brought chairs. Jing Di dusted off his robes and sat opposite them, coming straight to the point. Congratulations to your sect for finding good talent. Jiang Suan was indifferent. I wonder if Cultivator Jing has any advice. Don't be so nervous. Everyone, sit, sit. Jing Di smiled. It is said that the one born with an eight sword spirit is hard to encounter in a thousand years. I couldn't help but wonder, so I wanted to see how amazing he was. Where is that little brother? Would you like to show yourself this was asking a question he already knew the answer to? At first, it seemed that the three youths had stood up in anger, but they were actually blocking the young man behind them impenetrably, isolating him from others' prying eyes. He Ming said angrily, who's your little brother? That is our disciple of Han Shan. Jing Di refused to give in. He was conceited and had excellent skill. He truly was one in a million. Over time, some would dare to compare him with Ji Xiao. However, the sword saint had passed away. He wanted to see how this lucky boy was better than himself. Just as the two sides were deadlocked, suddenly there was a sharp cough behind the Han Shan cultivators and the three men quickly turned around. Jing Di was slightly surprised. He thought to himself, could it be that the one in legends, born with an innate sword spirit, is actually someone in poor health? He only saw a thin young man covering his lips with a handkerchief and had a pale complexion. Because he was fiercely gasping for breath, his cheeks were unhealthily flushed. Yet his expression was very tranquil, as if the one suffering from an illness wasn't himself. Seeing this person plagued by illness, Jing Di secretly shook his head. Innate sword spirit is no more than this. A Han Shan cultivator patted his back and the young man thanked him in a low voice. He suddenly lifted his eyes and his gaze turned. Jing Di was startled. The color of the young man's pupil was light. He had thin lips and a narrow nose and because he was so thin, the contours of his face were sharp like the point of a spear that gaze was not sharp or dignified, but there seemed to be some kind of a strange, mind, staring power that made his mind go blank for a moment. By the time he regained his concentration, the young man had lowered his eyes. Li Wei was afraid that his future shitty would cough up his lungs. He consoled him, it's all right. When you get to Han Shan, the elders will naturally have a miracle elixir to cure you. Jing Di laughed, this little brother, you may probably know that Han Shan's ice and snow does not melt all year, and your coughing illness can't handle the cold. A warm and humid Mingai Lake is spring like year round, which is a good place for our shitty to be. He Ming interrupted him, what's so great about that? A Chang Peak is also spring like year round when the words were spoken. He knew he had made a mistake and showed indignation. And as expected, Jing Di brought up something to ridicule. Chang Peak. After Sword Saint Ji Xiao departed this mortal coil, how could Chang Peak last long with only his cultivation palmer left? I advise you to think of the future and choose a different tree. He was not done talking yet, but he saw the young man turn to the three people of Han Shan, frowning and asked, his cultivation partner, how is he now? Jiang Zuan thought that he adored Ji Xiao's Henrin, so he was especially concerned about the matters of Chang Peak. He couldn't help but sigh, Elder Meng is young and impulsive. At Henrin's offering ceremony, he unexpectedly said he would take part in next year's Grand Hanhei competition. Now the whole cultivation world knows about it. Chapter 8 My heart longs for you across this endless distance. The cultivators and personal disciples from the two sects currently in Han Shan's ancestral hall were also present on that day. They had personally observed Meng Zuli's grief stricken wail for the deceased. Everyone was talking over the other, giving the young man an account of Ji Xiao's cultivation partner. Some people said that Meng Zuli's temperament was resolute, upright, and extremely sentimental, while others said that he was too naive. The young man listened quietly at first and in the end said softly, Nonsense. Because of all the coughing, his voice was raspy and so the others saw him open his mouth, but were not able to hear him clearly. The sun set and its afterglow came beaming in from outside the window. The young man sat in the light golden evening rays, and not knowing what he thought of, his pale face slightly flushed. He was Ji Zhao. Ji Zhao had experienced the great catastrophe of life and death, and his mortal body was destroyed. There was no choice but for his soul to leave his body, Travis, 47, a vast distance, to find a young man near death and seize his body to be reborn. An upright cultivator's way of body seizing was to find someone on the brink of death, who was without any friends or relatives and whose breath was on the verge of severing. Only in this way will Palmer not be affected. This body in his birth chart, 48, was compatible. His illness beyond cure and destiny fully exhausted it goes without saying that this was just right. But his soul was too strong, it would be hard for a weak body to bear its weight, just like a sharp blade with a fragile glass sheath. They will inevitably clash. Ji Zhao used the power of his state of mind to clear the body, training it to be born of an eight sword spirit, just like polishing a sword. But the agony of this pain still could not be dispelled. The bottom of his heart was like it had been cut by a blade and he could not help holding in his coughs. But compared to dying a nomeless death, bearing a sense of pain was life's peculiar way of teaching. Everyone was still discussing Meng Zuli. Jiang Suan could not take it anymore when he saw everyone talking and had to take the initiative to bring everyone back to the topic. These people aren't closely related to you. Don't take the words seriously. You will definitely not enter the Changchun Peak. Han Shan has five other peaks, each with strong masters, 49, who have reached the state of Dajing, 50, 51. I heard that they wish to take in some disciples this year, maybe you'll be one of those head disciples. He patted the young man's shoulder and jokingly said, if you catch up to the Taoist elder when he leaves the mountain to search for disciples, then that would be even better. Later on we will all need to call you Shishu, 52. Actually, according to the rules, before one entered Han Shan's inner sect, they were required to pass the evaluation by the argumentation hall. When accepting disciples, the peak lords did not just consider aptitude. But now that there was Ming Dai Lake at the side eyeing him menacingly, he tried his best to paint a painful picture, attempting to deepen the young man's good opinion towards Han Shan. Li Wei continued, even if you don't go to the highest peak, our Chongbi peak is also very good. Isn't Ji Zhao's Henry the one you worship the most? My master and the sword saint's relationship was exceptionally good. The main hall in our peak has the sword saint's treasured scrolls of calligraphy hanging in it. After you come there, you can admire it daily. Now that truly is a good calligraphy, two good poems, my heart longs for yours across this endless distance. A sword, a sword something, as he was saying this excitedly, his voice suddenly weakened. He hated that he had not been to the
but he was young, so I also did not fuss over it with him. Thinking of this, his breathing became uneven once again and he could not help coughing lowly. Jing Di saw that the young man had the verses of Han Shen at his fingertips, knowing it by heart, and knew that there really was no possibility of him switching to Mingai Lake. Getting involved would be pointless and would harm his dignity. And so, he subconsciously sighed in regret, but his face had a smile. It's late. We won't disturb the three cultivators on your journey. We shall take our leave. The three people of Han Shan wished that the people of Mingai Lake would vanish in an instant, fearing that if they stayed any longer, they would create a kind and beautiful Shiji. 53. To swindle ignorant young men. At long last, this round of accepting a disciple was a moment to feel proud and elated. The Han Shan cultivator smiled splendidly. Cultivator Jing, have a safe journey. We will not see you out. If fate shall have it, we shall meet again on the contrary. Jindi was not angry. He took a group of disciples to the door and turned around, smiling. We do not need fate. We shall see each other at the Hanhei secret domain. Next spring, we shall also see who boundless dawn will belong to. The tone of his voice descended as he walked further away. Li Wei and Ting angrily slapped the table. Zhang Suan did not approve and turned his head towards the young man, smiling. We've been in a hurry these past few days. You've worked hard. If you're too tired, don't hold out in spite of the difficulty. We can rest for a night in the village. Ji Zhao shook his head. I'm not exhausted. It's best if we return to the mountain as soon as possible. Hearing this, the three people secretly thought, this young man's body is weak. He rushed around with them the whole journey, eating in the wind and sleeping on the ground. Yet he never complained once. A tenacious nature combined with exceptional natural skill, his future will be limitless. Fortunately, Mingai Lake failed, all thanks to the blessing of Ji Zhao's Henrin. Ji Zhao did not know that he was being thanked. He only felt as if he was listening to a story when others talked about the sword he used. The secret domain he opened and the cultivation partner was hiding in his peak. A grand dream, looking over everything in vain, it was best to start over from scratch. But his own nominal cultivation partner, Meng Zuli, seemed to be a little off. He left boundless dawn in Changchun Peak to fortify the array. As long as Meng Zuli did not leave Changchun Peak, no one could harm the hair on his head. What need was there to use the final wish of the departed as an excuse at the ancestor hall and insist on going to the Hanhei secret domain? Could it be that someone forced him? Or did someone bully him? A ton of possibilities flashed through Ji Zhao's head. One moment he saw Meng Zuli lose the protection of everlasting Changchun S protection array, curled up and shivering in a boundless blizzard. The next moment he saw Meng Zuli getting kicked out of Hanshan. And a hundred years later, his cultivation was successful, and because he harbored hatred for the human realm, he would start slaughtering them. His attitude towards Meng Zuli was rather complicated. He feared that other people would take advantage of his cultivation partner, but at the same time he also feared that his cultivation partner would take advantage of other people. Other cultivators considered marriage to be a big deal in life. However, in Ji Zhao's endless life of cultivating, Meng Zuli only took up a fraction of his attention. A grand yao on the brink of death whom he had met on the roadside. With his compassionate heart he saved him in passing. It was a very simple matter. A fraction was enough. There were many matters more complicated than this. Until he lost his mortal body, he had thought that he had performed his utmost for the sect and had a clear conscience regarding the human realm. But what about Meng Zuli? In the past, he had promised to keep him safe for his whole life, to provide him with clothing and food. Making a promise, but being unable to fulfill it, one would naturally have qualms about it. Therefore, that fraction became a variable. Ji Zhao walked under the lonely setting sun and recalled the day that he had met Meng Zuli for the first time. The author has something to say. This was a short little chapter tomorrow, everyone will know what kind of Yang Meng Zuli used to be. Please, my heart longs for you across this endless distance comes from the Song Dynasty poem Fish in Spring Waters. Chapter 9 The Heavens Can't Kill Me. That day was without the splendid glow of the sunset and Changchun Peak's bright and clear moonlight. A vast expanse of wasteland where the withering grass touched the sky. A plethora of light snowflakes fluttered about. Thick large clouds passed through, hiding the sky and covering the earth and laid with the wilderness. The place where the human, Yao and demon realms met was called the borderlands. The climate was extreme and surprisingly rain, snow, wind and thunder frequently alternated. Where laws did not exist, evil sorts went their own way, criminals murdering and thieving, escapees who get entangled in the disaster of murder, heretics unaccepted by any circle. These people, or Yao, were usually good at hiding and were cautious to avoid the omnipresent crisis of life and death. Then there was another type, which was the likes of Qi Zhao, who walked the heavens and earth in a just and honorable way. When snowstorms unexpectedly came, even they would avoid him. What separated the outside realm from the other three realms was a violent and strong wind barrier. Ever since the heavens and earth first separated, the time when every race was created, the barrier was there. But the strong ones of every race inevitably had a way to ward off the astral winds and traverse the three realms. The demon race used magic. The human race utilized Tenki and the Yao race relied on their solid and sturdy bodies of skin, fur, and muscle. One hundred years ago, the demon race took measures to infiltrate the human realm, and cultivators finally became aware of the natural barrier being unreliable. After the chaos of war ended, the strong ones of the human realm joined forces to establish a protection array, which became the second barrier. Due to the fact that danger lurked at every corner of the borderlands and the spiritual influence was destitute, many people could not or did not want to perform the arduous and thankless task of guarding the protection array. Therefore, every three years, Sword Saint Chi Shao would go back and forth to the barriers inside and outside and leave some sort of intent behind to deter foreign enemies. If he ran into a strong member of the demon race, then there was no avoiding fighting another fierce battle. Three years and then three more. After a while, people began to think of it as a matter of course, as if it was something that the Sword Saint was supposed to be doing. After all, he was unmatched in the human realm. Who else would protect the four corners of Earth? Even Chi Zhao himself was used to it. Just like how an average cultivator trains arduously or an ordinary person tires away to make a living, words like tribute and sacrifice had nothing to do with it. It was merely a part of everyday life. Whether they be a sword saint or a commoner, under the heavenly law, there was no difference. Ji Zhao had a black cloak draped over his body which was quite striking on a snowy day. In fact, one did not need to catch sight of him. As long as they sensed a hint of his formidable aura, the creatures of the borderlands would be itching to retreat 100 Jiang. But today was different. As Ji Zhao quietly went forward, amidst the sound of snow and wind, a low, weak voice echoed, Greetings, sword saint, please wait. Ji Zhao's strides did not change, as though he had not heard. That was the voice of a young and immature youth. I have suffered a serious injury. I faced people chasing me to kill me. Sword Saint, please save this life of mine. I will inevitably repay you someday. Ji Xiao already knew there was a Yao hiding behind the thicket of reeds and was disinclined to pay it any mind. To his surprise, this weak Yao was quite courageous. The relationship of the human race and the Yao race was delicate. On the surface, everyone kept to themselves. Sometimes, they would even work together to fend off the demon race. Yet people used Yao to be refined as weapons and Grand Yao also feasted on humans to gain nourishment. Ji Xiao walked towards the direction the sound came from and saw something small like a badly mangled lump. It lay trembling on the ground, like a freshly bloomed plum blossom in the snow. He asked, Do you recognize me? I recognize your sword intent. You Ji Zhao. Ji Zhao bent over and lightly picked it up, concentrating on its details for a moment. A spirit mink, king of the snow mountain, unlike terms of address for human cultivators like patriarch, Daoist priest, Buddhist saint, sword saint, etc. In the Yao realm, the strongest Yao of each area of the Yao realm was collectively referred to as the king. He had heard a few days ago that the king of the snow mountain was to unify the Y
I will accompany you to serve as a diversion, as amusement and fight against the three realms for you the human realm did in fact have a method of using spiritual beasts. Ji Zhao thought of Ming Shan's chance the only beings difficult to tame are wicked people and spiritual beasts and shook his head. Spiritual beasts are finicky and are very difficult to raise. I am different, I am very easy to take care of. I have heard that your hanch and has snowstorms for days on end, and there are tigers, panthers, and wolves roaming about the mountains and forests. That just happens to suit me. I like to eat meat, any meat will do and I even like to roll around in the snow after I have eaten my fill. If you take me back, I will serve as a sect guardian deity the spirit makes round eyes blinked. You human cultivators, aren't you particular about the words predestined relationship? You and I suit one another, is that not fate? Ji Zhao said faintly, I am unable to save you. Your Yao core has been shattered and your meridians have been broken beyond repair by an outside force. Even if I was able to heal your outer wounds, your time would still be limited. In the end, he was moved to compassion. Where are your parents, your family? I will take you to see them one last time. I do not have a mother or father. I was raised by a speck of spiritual energy under the snow saint's mountain in the Yao realm. I was born of the heavens and raised by the earth. The spirit mink, hearing him decline, yet refused to give up. Respected sword saint, please think of something. The fact that I was able to meet you today proves that my life should not be cut short. The heavens cannot kill you, the heavens cannot kill you, Ji Xiao objected. With you looking like this, if you came across a different cultivator, I am afraid that you would have your Yao scraped out. Your fur and skin peeled off your muscle and bones, all to become a spiritual weapon or part of an elixir. The spirit mink started trembling slightly in his hands. But I think that, you're a good person. Ji Zhao was silent. The wind and snow whistled. The spirit mink looking at him full of anticipation, the glimmer in its two eyes gradually dimming. Suddenly it heard Ji Xiao open his mouth. I have a shikshin who has mastered the way of concocting elixirs. He once concocted a reincarnation elixir. It may keep your soul from being extinguished. I will reconstruct your flesh for you and have you be reborn, to be reincarnated into a human. This way there might be a sliver of hope for you to live. Are you willing to give up your Yao form the spirit mink? Having experienced unknown hardships in the Yao realm responded without thinking, okay, as long as I can live, I'm willing to be human, you want to be human. However, it is not at all easy. Yao can eat Yao. However, people cannot eat people. Jia Zhao were a Syrian expression. Rivers and mountains are easy to change. But one's temperament is difficult to move. 56. Do you have to promise me that you won't kill in the human realm? He only needed one word of oral confirmation. He wasn't forcing the spirit to make to make a spiritual pledge. Because he was confident that if the other backed out, he would still be able to keep it under control. To become a human, I'm willing to be a vegetarian. But if I cannot kill, what will I do if others try to bully me? Ji Zhao said lightly, if you are by my side, you will have me to guard your safety. He reached his hand out, holding a healing pellet and the little mink's tongue curled up, swallowing without the slightest hesitation. Not after long, his outer wounds gradually healed. Jia Zhao also primed him clean. With that sorted out, he finally wasn't a spun lump of skin and flesh, with the miserable look of blood trickling down. The spirit mink curled further into his embrace, the grace of saving my life, I am unable to repay. Thus, from now on, I wish to follow the sword saint everywhere Ji Zhao petted over its white fur, his fingertips touching softness. His Yao core and meridians were thoroughly shattered, only his heart faintly beat. It was some weak thing that even one finger could simply crush it to death. The human body has three flames. At both shoulders and the forehead, Yang energy, 57, gathers. If you reincarnate as a human, the Yang fire, 58, will weaken and your constitution will be cold. Thus, you will be unable to endure the cold. Have you thought this through the two things this Yao previously loved the most? Eating meat to its heart's content and playing around in the snow, were the ones it suddenly could no longer do. The spirit mink still said, as long as I can live, Ji Zhao frowned, my dwelling is especially cold. Do you still wish to come with me? He lived on the lone highest peak top in Hanshan, where snowstorms wreaked havoc and a single drop of water would quickly become ice. The spirit mink hastily said, I can wear thicker clothes and you can start a furnace for me. Can you not? The spirit mink whispered, a small one would do. Ji Zhao thought quietly for a moment and nodded his head, all right. The spirit mink was ecstatic. It cuddled the side of his neck and lightly licked at his lower jaw. Ji Zhao started walking towards the human realm. Fierce winds blew directly at him, which caused his cloak to flutter about. The spearman hid in his embrace and went to sleep in a daze. Ji Zhao went to the celestial lake domain seeking an elixir. The lord of the celestial lake's domain was once his shikshan from the same sect. Even though he came from Han Shan, he was proficient in concocting elixirs, creating weapons, the art of deduction, key observation technique, etc. He devoted himself to multiple studies, all of them except for those that required a sword. After the peak lord finished listening to the whole story, he carefully calculated and urged Ji Zhao not to meddle with karma. 